Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Our next session is Personalizing Toys from Digital to IRL. And our presenter is Tula Scheiber. Tula? Hi, everyone. Great to see you all. And I'm very happy to be here. Um, I'm Hamutal Schieber. You can all call me Tula. If you don't speak Hebrew, that's probably the best way. Uh, and I'm the founder and CEO of Shiba Research. It's a market research and competitive intelligence company. And what we do is to help connect the dots between consumer trends, technology, market trends, and competitive analysis. And when the Toy Association asked me if there's a trend that I would like to speak of, I noticed the personalization trend as something that is um, yet to be uncovered by most of the competitors in the industry. So while we see a lot of personalization, you know, and have seen it for many, many years, there are new technologies and new generations that are looking at personalization differently. And what I'm hoping to do today is to maybe help you think about personalization a little bit differently and maybe you live here thinking about the next opportunity, maybe it will give you inspiration or propel you forward with your innovation. Um, we will talk about a little bit about Gen Alpha and Gen Z. If you've ever seen me talk uh, online or in other occasions, uh, I dive very deeply into these generations. I do have some of them at home unfortunately, um, and I have a lot to say about them and learn from them, but we don't have a lot of time today, so I will just touch some of the trends, and we will talk about emerging trends and technologies for the personalization opportunity, and of course, how this will help you achieve loyalty, relevance, profitability, and growth in revenue and users. So first, I would like to hear from you. Why do you think, if you do, that personalization is more important than ever today? Yes. Amazing. So uh, what you were saying is that we need to adjust our economy to the new consumers, um, which is exactly what I'm going to talk about. So not so much the new economy and education, which is a brilliant subject that uh, the previous speaker talked about, but I do want to speak about the new generations. So we know that Gen Alpha and Generation Z are the most diverse generations ever, ethnically, gender-wise, and in any cultural way possible. That's why we see so many tribes or sub-trends on social media. That's why we see so many creators. This is why creator economy has become so important, because we can no longer be the few who talk to the masses. The masses talk back, and we need to listen. And as uh, it comes to Generation Alpha, according to McGrindle Research, they say we can no longer design products for Generation Alpha and push the products at them. They want a seat at the table. And co-creation is a trend that we see and follows us everywhere. Uh, Roblox also talks about it in their um, investor presentations. If you listen to those, it comes up a lot. And Generation Z is their older siblings, maybe. Uh, the older ones are already 28 or even almost 29. And 95% of them say that being authentic and true to themselves is extremely or very important. And we will see why it is relevant to personalization in a second. So in the metaverse where we all maybe used to hide behind our virtual selves, today 52% of Gen Z say that they're actually more themselves in the metaverse than in real life. They even use 
their avatars and customization of avatars to unveil their identity and to uh, promote an aspect of themselves that the real world doesn't necessarily know about. 94% of Gen Z Roblox users have done at least some customization of their avatars. This is mind-blowing, okay? Um, and this leads us to the fact that 1.8 billion avatar items were sold in 2022. So a huge opportunity there. And they say that they dress their avatars to express individuality or feel good about themselves. So for them, authentic selves is connected directly to personal. So personalization helps them achieve authenticity. And as we said, authenticity is of utmost importance to Gen Z. What do you think makes a product personal? Maybe you have some ideas. Pardon? Amazing. So authentic to the person who created it. So when we look at personalization, we see three categories. It's created by me, created for me, and created with me. And the difference is, um, and, and there is no hierarchy in my opinion. One could, you know, claim that one of them is more important or more advanced. I don't think so. I think any of these, if you can incorporate any of these into your strategy, then you've achieved uh, a great deal. So created by, for me, is usually based on data. It could be data that I provide, you know, some kind of uh, um, query or some kind of survey or whatever. It could be the vast data that's collected about me from social media, from Google searches, from anything that I live and breathe uh, on the net and also not on the net. And that could be creation of content, you know, oh, we see you looking at this type of toys. Maybe this will be interesting for you. Product, the environment in retail, physically or digitally, and the curation. So these are the uh, products that are most suitable for you. Created by me is when I create something and then I can 3D print it or print it on demand. Uh, I can use AR and virtual reality tools. And of course, the metaverse, as we talked about before, I'll jump into examples in a sec. And created with me the co-creation we um, talked about before, uh, it could be in fandom, so when we talk about um, consumer to creator, consumer to brand, and consumer to consumer, and not necessarily just brand to consumer, and not even only creator to consumer. Uh, here we have a little bit of limited customization sometimes, and of course user-generated content that we know for the past two decades. And it's important to note that for these generations, me, doesn't necessarily mean who I am in the real world. It could be my alter ego, so that persona that I'm not necessarily showing anyone uh, in the real world, but I do uh, use digitally, or my creators, because creators um, are symbolic to people. There are a lot of us uh, standing on social media. People identify with creators as if they are extension of themselves. So a lot of times, if we work with or through creators, it's also very much uh, an aspect of personalization. This is probably an example that all of you know, and judging by the line I just waited in in Starbucks, everyone here knows. Uh, these are some of the personalization aspects of Starbucks. So for me, a perfect day often includes you choose one and then you get the next question and you get a recommendation for the perfect drink. But also, so that's the created for me. But then I have a created by me. I have 170,000 ways to customize beverages at Starbucks. And that's a way for customers to celebrate their creativity, according to the company. And 60% of drinks in 
Q3 2023 were customized, and Starbucks said that it led to an uptick of 9% in their average check, which is, again, huge and shows that people are willing to pay for uh, something being exactly the way they want it and also express their creativity. And then we have the co-creation. So the pink drink that a lot of people uh, probably know is something that started on TikTok, like many other drinks. And then Starbucks just added it to their menus. Um, so this is a co-creation, and people still talk about the pink drink. On TikTok, it has 286 million views uh, per the last time I checked. And that just shows uh, how much it is more relevant to offer something that was co-created with consumers and listen to them. Now, we all know that personalization has always been here. So American Girl, Truly Me Dolls, $115. They have many different types of hair as a room full of them in my house uh, can demonstrate. Uh, and they have different shoes and different anything. But if you want to create your own doll, you'd have to add about $100. And again, you have all of these options in the Truly Me. So one asks, I am asking for real. I'm asking my kids, why do you need to create your own doll? Isn't Truly Me enough? But no, they need it to be their own creation. Because again, like the IKEA effect, when you create your own doll, when no one else has your doll, it means something. You built it. You're the creator of the doll. You're their mom or dad or parent. So more customization options also increase the dollars per transaction, as build -Bear shows us. We can buy this uh, cute birthday treat bear for $14. Why not? That's why not, because you can add clothes, you can add shoes, sound, scents, accessories, and very easily it'll jump to $50. So between 2012 and 2021, the average dollars per transaction um, jumped in over 50% because of the adding of this customization. So we see that this has a direct uh, effect on revenue. Now also engagement. Today, if I can buy anything on Amazon, why should I go to the Lego store? Because on the Lego store, in the Lego store, I can go to the minifigure factory and make my own minifigure and put it on a keychain. And I would be the only one who has it. And I can choose from multiple, um, a variety of, of options. Um, and also Lego tried to do it online, but I think it failed because they stopped. So I'm not sure what happened there, but it didn't work online. Um, what makes personalization more available than before? So today we have new technologies and platforms that we didn't have in the past, which means that all of these consumer trends that we saw, the need for more personalization, and the opportunity, the growth in revenue and loyalty and engagement are now meeting new technologies. So we have on-demand and 3D printing, we have AR and VR and metaverse. We can understand consumers better because we have so much data that we can collect. And we have AI and machine learning to help us learn more about the consumers. And of course, social media trend-informed variety. And we can interact with them through in-store media, online, mobile, e-commerce, so many channels that 20 years ago we didn't have. And all the consumers to consumers and creators to fans platforms. Here are some examples, just a few examples. Um, do you know the Hasbro selfie series? Yes, amazing. So when I told this, I, I was at a kid's party because I have four kids, so I, I'm in endless parties, someone help, save, save me. Um, I was at a kid's party, I was talking about this because I was very excited about this, and the kid's eyes became saucers. What? I can create my own figure? Um, I can have a Star Wars with my face on it? Um, that's the kind of excitement that you want to have as marketers, as producers. Um, and the fact that you can scan your face and then 
3D print your figure is really something beyond awesome. Digital twins, something that I talked about uh, last year at the Toy Fair um, with the Metaverse opportunity, digital twins is really cool and important because we can uh, import all of the toys that we have in real life and play with them digitally. Or we can customize the endless possibilities of com customizations online and then we can print on demand or print in 3D and have the same toys in real life. So uh, Lego just, not just, I think it was 2022, launched a collaboration with Epic Games. No, it was actually quite new and they even just announced that it will be on, uh, on Fortnite. Uh, they launched this uh, uh, collaboration to help consumers access um, the metaverse through Lego and build a bear workshop also launched uh, Metaverse Universe. Uh, you can really play with your build bear you can customize it, and of course, then you would be able to also purchase what you designed. And they say that by offering a digital space that blends the physical and the digital, build bear continues to drive community, relevancy, and brand love in stores, online, and beyond. So again, it's one of the brands that was first to understand the power of customization and personalization, and they see that they need to take it to a digital space. Mattel and Crypto is, do you know this one? Yes, no, okay, yes, right? No, you were just scratching. So um, NFTs, non-fungible tokens, are, you probably know about crypto coins and everything. Um, cryptoids create playable and customizable NFTs. And these cryptoids are just toys that you can customize in the metaverse. And um, they also say that they offer a consumer to consumer platform. So we talked about the entrepreneurship of Gen Alpha and Gen Z. They want to co-create. They also want to be able to benefit of that. And so we see a lot of consumer-to-consumer -consumer platforms beyond toys. It's a huge retail trend and social media trend and social commerce trend. And here we see that Mattel is also dipping its toys, its toes, into this um, landscape. So in conclusion, uh, we talked about personalization goals to increase loyalty, empower consumers, uh, increase relevancy and revenue and profit. And I would love you to consider the personalization that's most available to you. If you have a lot of data available, maybe you can start with for the consumer, or maybe you can ask for them to customize by, by themselves and do it for them. Uh, or maybe you can listen on social media and maybe create with them. And you can consider any technology that's available to you. So I know there are a lot of uh, tracks here that talk about the metaverse and digital twins. Uh, this, is, this might be the fastest way for you. Maybe you already have in-store uh, 3D printing or on-demand printing. Maybe that's uh, a better way for you to, to start. Or any other um, digital and physical and digital uh, twinning. So there are a lot of opportunities. And that's it, I hope I inspired you uh, to think about this opportunity and for any other opportunity, any question, you're very welcome to contact me and thank you so much.